Greg Smith. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. If you want to find video of young people doing incredibly dumb and stupid things, where do you go? YouTube. My hearing's a little bad. Where do you go? YouTube. Right, okay, well if we had YouTube back when I was 16, because we didn't back then, you would have easily been able to pull up video of a kid in a manual wheelchair, 16 years old, who had a great idea for his cousin to get some ski rope and tie the manual wheelchair under the back of a riding lawnmower. So we're driving down the street. He's on the lawnmower. I'm behind him about 20 feet. And we're having a real good time just going down the street. And then we got to the end of the street, and he made a U-turn. Now, my chair, 20 feet behind him, did not make the U-turn. And it slammed into the curb and flipped up in the air and turned over on top of me. And my cousin, who was riding the lawnmower, you know, a lawnmower's loud. He didn't hear it. He's driving down the road and dragging me down the road with my chair on top of me. Now, we tell that story every year at family reunions. And, you know, it doesn't change at all because it's the absolute truth. But think about this for a second, all right? Here's a 16-year-old kid, pretty smart kid, right? I had a 3.0 GPA, not genius, but that's because I didn't study much, all right? I had a 26 on my ACT. I was doing great, pretty bright kid, right? But dumb enough for the lawnmower. Dumb enough for the lawnmower. And my point in telling you guys this story is that when we're 16, when we're 17, 18, we just don't have enough life experience to base all our decisions and make the right decisions. We don't. You don't. But when I was 16, I was dumb enough with a lawnmower, yeah. But I was smart enough to establish clear and specific goals, clear and specific dreams, big dreams for myself that I wanted to accomplish. Big dreams. Now, at that point, when I was 16 years old, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be the play-by-play -play announcer for a National Football League team. Either that, or I wanted to be on ESPN. I wanted to have Mike Tirico's job. I wanted to sit next to John Gruden and describe the plays of the game on Monday Night Football. That was my dream, that was my goal, and I was gonna do whatever it took to make that happen. Goals. You have to have goals. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But what I want to say right now is the fact that my goals have always been sports related. You see, football is in my blood. I'm gonna give you background about this. My father was an All-America quarterback for Alexander High School in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Now these are back in the days when the schools were separated from, but he was from Brookhaven, All-American quarterback, went on to be the quarterback at Alcorn, Alcorn State, all right? My kids are all three great athletes. Y'all know Donovan, Donovan balled out here. He's at Perk right now. He's doing the same thing up there. He has big dreams, you know? You have to have big dreams. For me, I had a dream as a, as a young kid that I wanted to be a football player, but you know, I have muscular dystrophy. I'm in this wheelchair today. But back when I was in about the fourth grade, I could still walk and I could still run a little bit. And boy, I could throw the football and I could throw perfect spirals. So at recess, you know, when we had the little football games at recess, because I couldn't run very fast, and because I had a good arm, I was always the quarterback. So on this one play, I dropped back, and I threw it down the field, and the receiver went left. 
I thought he was going to go right, intercepted. So I'm running over to try to make the tackle. And I hit him good. And he just ran right through me. I mean, it was like I was not even there. It wasn't like he straight armed me or anything or put the move on me. I hit him solid, and he ran right through me like I was a rag doll. And that's when I really realized the meaning of muscular dystrophy. That means all my life, I'm gradually getting weaker. Things that I used to be able to do, I can no longer do. It's a steady progression. I used to be able to walk, can't do it. Used to be able to play the drums, can't do it. Used to be able to help myself in and out of the bathroom, can't do it. Used to be able to get in and out of bed, can't do it. Used to be able to pick things up off the floor when I dropped them, can't do it. Used to be able to turn over in bed at night without waking up and figuring out a way to do it. I can still turn over, but it's an ordeal, you know? And so my dream of being a football player was crushed at that moment when I laid on the ground at recess. So I had to adjust my dream. And that's how my dream changed from being an athlete to being an announcer. So the dumb lawnmower boy went on to Arizona State University, way out in Tempe, Arizona, across the country to go to school. And man, when I got out there, it was like party city. I mean, girls, you know, guys drinking, you know, people doing things they shouldn't be doing, smoking weed, you know, all that stuff was all around me. The first week of school, party, 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 party. All right, that's all it was. And I partook in my share of it, all right? But I knew I had to get up and go to class, and I knew I had to go to a meeting at the campus radio station my freshman year because I had a dream. And I showed them my demo tape from high school. And as a freshman, I became the play-by-play -play voice of the Arizona State Sun Devils on the campus radio station. That's like a freshman starting on the football team for a D1 school. So I had four years of radio play-by-play -play experience. My dream was definitely within reach. While I was there at school, despite all the partying going on and the kids that I met my freshman year who failed out because they didn't have a dream, I was always focused on my dream. And so I worked at the television station and the newspaper, you know, and I got a lot of experience. And when I graduated, I had one of the best resumes you can ever expect a kid to have graduating from college trying to be a sportscaster. And I got a job and I went on to become the voice of Cardinal Talk on the NFL radio, uh, Arizona Cardinals radio network. And I was so close to my dream. But you know what? I grew up a little bit. I started to change my passion and my desires. And my dream changed. And I started my own radio show, not about sports, but about something else, about life and disability. And I went on and did that for 14 years, reached millions of people, and uh, the rest is history. But having a big dream, now my dream changed, but I think I've exceeded my dream and will continue to do so. You gotta have a dream. Your dream can change, but if you're moving forward, then that's a good thing. If you don't have a dream, you kind of drift around. You know, you don't know what you want to do. You maybe start doing this and then you get bored and you start doing that. Pick something. Pick a dream job and work towards that goal. And I guarantee you, that's a major part of your success. Let me hear you say big dreams. Big dreams. Again, I can't hear very well. Big dreams. Okay, big dreams. Self-definition. Now, when I say self-definition, 
You've all heard the expression that your reputation is going to follow you everywhere you go, haven't you? The things you do in the dark are going to come out in the light someday, you know? And people base their opinion on you on the things that you do and your reputation. And not all of us have great reputations. I mean, hey, I got things in my reputation I don't like. But you know what? There's a thing called, uh, a saying called, your reputation follows you everywhere you go. I have a saying that there's nothing that says you have to follow your reputation. In other words, if people think certain things about you, be the difference. You know, and it's not only about things you've done, it can be about the way you look or the way you carry yourself that people base your reputation on. For example, for me, I know when I'm, when I'm rolling around town or I go into Walmart, you know, people look at me and they feel sorry for me. They kind of smile and feel sorry for me. I can feel it. But you know what? The funny thing is, when I look at them, I feel sorry for them. I would not change my situation in my life with anybody. I wouldn't trade with anybody because I've had a lot of joy and success and happiness in my life. And that's because I define myself. I'm not the poor little skinny crippled guy in the wheelchair. I'm the 65 pound giant. I'm the wheelchair dude with the winning attitude. That's who I am. You might have a teacher that looks at you and based on your attitude in the class and and your performance so far, she's probably already made her mind up. He's not a good student. He's going to get a D or an F. You know, he's not going to pass or a C minus. You know what? If you want to change people's perception of you and change your reputation, be the difference. Get a tutor. Raise your hand in class and ask questions. Show that you care. And your reputation can change because your definition of yourself in the classroom changed. Let's say you have a coach that might think, oh, he's not a good blocker. He doesn't block. Well, you know what? Change that coach's perception of you by changing your definition of yourself and get out there and knock everybody on their butts every play. And you know what? That reputation is going to change quickly. Your reputation follows you everywhere you go, but you do not have to follow your reputation. You lead your reputation. Does that make sense? Let me hear you say self-death. Self-death. All right, that's better. No quit. You guys are athletes. You know that you play to the final whistle or to the final gun, till the clock reads zero, zero. By no quit, I mean never ever giving up on your dreams, never ever giving up on your own self-definition, continually striving towards your goal, never giving up. That makes sense, doesn't it? There's also the no quit of sticking with whatever you're doing right now until you get it done sticking with a particular problem until you reach the resolution. My best story to exemplify this happened when I was about 21 years old. I was home by myself, and I was watching a late night rerun of a football game on ESPN. And I got hungry. And so I thought, man, I don't want potato chips, and that's all I got in there. I want some food. So I picked up the phone and I ordered a pizza. And so I'm watching the game in the living room, and it was a good game. I was really into it, you know? I'm like, call time out, you know, we got to do this. Ding dong, the doorbell rings. So I roll over, and I answer the door. And the pizza guy puts the, the box in my lap and a two liter of Pepsi on top of the box. So I rolled back in to watch the game, and I 
set the pizza down on the coffee table. And I flip the box open and I take a bite and it was good. It was good. But you know, when you eat pizza, you want to drink something, right? And then I realized, man, I messed up big time. Because never in my life have I been able to open a two liter bottle. I don't have the strength in my fingers to twist the cap, you know, with enough strength to, to break those little tabs that you gotta break the, to, you know, get the darn thing open. I've never been able to do that. And man, I was mad at myself for not asking the pizza guy to do it for me. So it's midnight. You know, what choice did I have? I could either enjoy a nice, refreshing glass of ice cold Pepsi, or I could drink some lukewarm tap water. I said, no, nah, I'm not having water. I'm having Pepsi. But the ordeal began. My first option was to use my teeth. So I bit down on that bottle, and I turned it, and, bit, and when I turned it, I bit my, my gum inside of my mouth. So now I'm bleeding, you know, shedding blood over this, this, this Pepsi bottle I wanted to get open. And I thought, well, I can go knock on my neighbor's door, but it's too late, and I don't know him like that. I can't just go, you know, bam, bam, bam. Hey, Bob, you want some Pepsi? <laughs> so no, I'm not doing that, so I thought, OK. The reason I can't get it open is because I need leverage. And for leverage, I need like a long stick of some sort. So having been a drummer, I had a whole bunch of drumsticks. So I gathered my materials. I got some, a drumstick, some scissors, and some duct tape. Duct tape works for everything, doesn't it? So I took about the next 45 minutes, and I cut the tape and made a loop in the tape for the drumstick to go in, and I carefully put it over the cap. And I tested it pretty good, and it seemed like it was going to work. So I laid it down on the table, and I grabbed the drumstick, and I twisted it with all my strength. And I pushed it down, and the tape broke. All right, by now it's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> I mean, the dang Pepsi's not even cold anymore. But I was really, really hot because I wanted it so bad. I wasn't having water, folks. All right? Water was for wimps. It was game time, man. All right? I was going to get this thing open. I didn't know how, but I was going to get it open. So I thought, hey, I need some tools. So I went out to the garage. I'm plundering around. I find my toolbox. I bend over on the ground, pick up a pair of pliers and a wrench. I brought them into the kitchen. Laid the two liter down, tightened that wrench as hard as I could, leaned on it, pushed my strength with all my strength, pushed down on it, and I made it progress. I looked down. I'd put horizontal scratches around the vertical ridges on the plastic cap. I'd done nothing to break those tabs, but you gotta break to get it open. Did the same thing with the pliers, more scratches. Those tabs were my enemy. So out of frustration, I went back to the garage and I heaved my tools towards the toolbox and I missed and they slid over to another corner and then I saw something that changed my life. It really did. I bent over and I picked it up. And I came into the kitchen. And I laid that two liter on the table. And I raised my hand in the air, which held a dart from my dartboard. <laughs> and I stabbed and squeezed into a cup the best tasting <laughs> beverage I've ever had in my life. Now opening a two liter bottle 
not the most significant thing I've ever accomplished. But I tell you what, when I lifted that weight, when I solved that problem, it felt good. It felt like the greatest high you can imagine. And it was addictive. And so I'd been seeking that feeling again and again and again. And that's what led, has led to a lot of my success. But you know what, if I'd given up, who knows what would happen with my life? You know, because I got addicted to that feeling that you get when you accomplish something by not quitting. Let me hear you say, no quit. No quit. All right. I think that my message is getting through. I hope that it is. What I'd like to have you do, I think because I've said it to you, you understand it, your mind understands it. But I want to get the message to flow through your body. Okay? For me, it's the fourth quarter in my life. I mean, I'm 49 years old. I have congestive heart failure and muscular dystrophy. So I know it's the fourth quarter. I'm hoping it's early in the fourth quarter, but it's the fourth quarter. For you, it's the first quarter. I mean, it's opening drive. You know, really, for you, it's the preseason. The game hadn't even started yet. I guess the kickoff is when you turn 18 and you graduate from high school. But for you, you've got so much future and so much potential. I want you to remember the three points that I made today. And so to instill them in your mind, because they're in your mind already, but I want them in your heart. Can you all stand up for me? I don't know if you all can all get where you can see me, but you can hear me, right? I want you to put your hand over your heart. Put your hand over your heart. Can you feel it beating? You feel how strong it's beating? Mine is weak. Mine is weak, but yours is strong. Can you feel the three things I've told you? Can you feel them pumping through your body? If you can remember these things and do these things for the rest of your life, you will score many touchdowns. Your dreams will come true. Your self-definition will be winner, and you will never, never quit, will you? Where's Marshall? I need you, man. Get these guys fired up. All right, let's go. All right, you start them out with the clap. You guys, clap your hands. All right. Let me hear you say, big dream. Big dream. Self death. Self death. No quit. No quit. Big dreams. Big dreams. Self death. Self death. No quit. No quit. Big dream. Big dream. Self death. Self death. No quit. No quit. Big dream. Big dream. Self death. Self death. No quit. No quit. Big dream. Big dream. Self death. Self death. No quit. No quit. Yeah. Yeah. How about it? Big dreams, go state. All right. Everybody looks at us like we're small. You know, they, we got it. Y'all gonna do it? And we ain't gonna quit. That's right. We get there. All right. Everybody you guys take care. Uh, Mr. Greg is a good guy. He always helps us and, and supports us, like his son, Donovan Smith. And uh, that's one of my best friends. And Mr. Greg has always pushed us forward and forward. And we just, Plan to keep going as hard as we can, never give up on anything in life. Great speech, it really got us all fired up, just makes you want to work hard and just do what you want to do and meet your goals in life. And it got me fired up, I'm ready to go out and practice again already. What I learned from this, um, this um, speaking is never give up, set big goals, and never give up, just like push it to the limit. Uh. I learned not to never give up and just the goals that I set for myself, just keep striving for them, just don't quit. 
And here at the school, I talk with uh, Mr. Smith quite a bit at the games and everything. We predict the games. Unfortunately, he beats me all the time, but uh, I look forward to seeing him. And when I don't see him, I feel like I done lost something into that game. And uh, I think he's a wonderful man, and I just love listening to him talk.